Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I'm Amy Nolte. I'm home from vacation and I'm back in my house. Looks like I still have some Christmas decorations to put away, but that's okay. Hey, I came home and taught my first Skype lesson of the new year and it gave me my idea for my video today. This was a student of mine that's kind of new. Um, we've only had a few lessons and they've mostly been piano lessons. Uh, but she also wants to sing. So this is what she did. She said, Amy, I've got this pile of papers and she held them up. She said, my old teacher gave me all of these, what did she said, all of, all of this sheet music and I don't know where to start with it. So she held them up so that I could see Skype lesson. And, um, and they were just printouts from fake books mostly. And she said, she said, like, I've got all of these and I don't, I don't know where to start. She goes, look at this one. It's called Autumn in New York. She goes, this one looks like brain surgery to me. That was my favorite part of the lesson. But I said to her, I said, I know exactly where you're coming from on this because I was you. I know this problem. I've had this problem. So then I told her about when I was her, which is when I was in high school. So when I was in high school, I wanted to get into jazz singing. I was in a jazz choir and we would go to festivals and I would hear other people sing and, and I would think that they were amazing. And I was listening to all these players. I remember we got to see the Yellow Jackets at the Reno Festival one year. I was blown away by the Yellow Jackets. I wanted to sound like Russell Ferrante on the piano. But so what my teacher did was give me a pile of papers like that. And he was like, learn these. So I would sit at the piano and fumble through those and try to play the chords and try to sing the melodies. And I did that all the time. And I had, I got some real books and I thought I was doing pretty good. And then I would go uh, maybe compete. Like I would go to some festival as a soloist, something like that. And everybody started telling me the same thing. They were like, you got some talent, but you need to listen to jazz. You gotta, you gotta listen to more people. And they would say, who do you listen to? And I would be like, yeah, I don't really listen to anybody. Cause I didn't. That's an awkward thing. I think probably a lot of you have experienced that. I think it's common. So the only way to remedy it is to start listening to people. That's what I told my student today. I said to approach learning tunes in jazz, from a pile of papers is backwards. So what you need to do is listen to a bunch of different artists, singers in this case, and decide who you like, like who kind of speaks to you. So I gave her an, a bunch of names of people that I like. I kind of tried to run the gamut of um, vocal quality, I guess, so that maybe something would appeal to her out of all of those. And the names that I gave her were um, Peggy Lee, I love Peggy Lee. I've learned a lot from Peggy Lee about subtlety and swinging, staying calm while you sing. I love that about her. Oh, I've also learned by watching her, you don't have to move very much. All she did was just stand there and sing. I love that. Peggy Lee. I said Judy Garland. She's one of my favorites. Much different, totally opposite of Peggy Lee, but I love her. Um, I told her Sarah Vaughn, who's just a genius and what vocal prowess, right? Um, I told her Nat, Nat King Cole. I said Chet Baker, Blossom Deary, Doris Day. She'd already been listening to Ella Fitzgerald, Nora Jones. Um, I might have added Diana Krall. So many people I would have added. Uh, there are many more people that I like to listen to as well, you know, but for my beginning student I just kind of wanted to give her some names. So that's that's what I said. And then I said start listening to those people and when you feel like you really like one of them Latch on for a second and go find maybe a best of album of that person Like say maybe you heard Peggy Lee singing fever and you thought oh, I've heard that before. I love that I, I really like that. So go look up like the best of Peggy Lee album. I'm sure there's quite a few of them. And then just listen to the whole thing for like a week. 
And as you listen to this Peggy Lee album, I guarantee some song, maybe four or five songs, but some song is gonna stick out to you and you're gonna really like it. And you're gonna say, I wanna learn that song. All right, now, this is where the fun part happens. You pick the song that Peggy Lee sings that you wanna learn. Let's say it's Waiting for the Train. I love that song by Peggy Lee. You love the way it sounds. You think, I wanna learn this song. So then, then, after you've listened to it a bunch of times and you can sing it along with Peggy Lee and you've got all her nuances under your belt and you feel like, feel like you are Peggy Lee when you're singing it along with her, then I would look up more singers that sing that song. Only after you've listened to it a bunch of times, look up more singers that sing that song. And then you go find them and you listen to those and maybe you don't like any of them as much as you like Peggy Lee. Maybe you like Peggy Lee the very best. That's, that might happen. But it's important to listen to a lot of different people sing the same song and then you can go find the sheet music. We don't say sheet music as jazz musicians. We say the chart. So you go look up the chart, all right? Especially if you're if you're a singer and you're kind of a beginner, you're, you're probably going to want to look up the chart. And you could look in iReal Pro, although I don't know if that particular song is in iReal Pro. You might even have to ask a friend to help you write the chart, something like that. But anyway, then you can sit down at your piano and try to play it because you already know it. You know how it sounds. You don't have to plunk through the melody. It's not like a, a labored thing that you do sitting at your piano trying to figure it out like your brain surgery. It's not brain surgery anymore. You've learned. You've learned about it. It's in your ear now. So that's important. You can't sing jazz unless you know what jazz sounds like and you are never going to learn that from looking at a chart. All right, that's my main, 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 main point today. You can't be a jazz singer or a jazz player unless you've listened to jazz, all right? You can't just hop into it and think, I've heard people sing jazz before, I'd like to do that too, and then put music in front of yourself and think that you're gonna have any chance of it. You don't have a chance unless you listen a lot and try to imitate, that's where it's at. As soon as I got, I got a, a, I got a Sarah Vaughan album called The Roulette Years, and it, I listened to that so much. I got, um, I got a Joe Beam collection. I listened to the Bossa Novas a lot. I listened to Ella Fitzgerald sings the Gershwin Songbook. I learned so many standards that I know to this day from Sarah Vaughan and Ella Fitzgerald on those two records probably like 50. That's when I started going back to those competitions and people started saying, all right, this is, this is good. You sound like somebody like that's, you know, and then, and then you start to feel good, but not until, not until you listen a bunch, you've got to listen to absorb. All right. So put down your sheet music, put them away, get out your, CDs or your phone, your YouTube, your Spotify, your Apple Music, however you are getting music these days, get your music. Listen to it all the time. It's gonna pay off and you're gonna start to sound like a jazz musician. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music. I hope this was helpful today. I'll see you next time.